that's where the catch comes into play. Like the biggest issue that people have that I see is not locking the blade. Mm -hmm. right? And the thing that they don't realize is this n one thing is something that can make or break you through time. Right? If you do not have that, if you lock that blade, then you can work on the rest of your stroke. Then you can work on your conditioning. Then you can work on your strength. But if you don't set it, I feel like you've just you've lost everything that you want to do after that. Right? So the biggest thing to remember is learn the catch. Take the time to learn the catch. And be patient. So we're back with Johnny. And if you broke the canoe paddle stroke down into you know its simplest steps or stages, yep. what would they be? It would be reach out with both your arms straight, set it and lock it, pull your body to it. Like that simple. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that is really what you're doing. You're just taking it, sticking it, and pulling yourself there without using your arms, right? If you bend your arms, you have an issue. If you keep your arms straight, you're using larger muscle groups. That's pretty simple. I think we just take the stroke and we make it out of control with all these different turns and this and that. How do you know if you're doing it right or if you're doing it wrong? If you're doing it right, it's hard. It feels hard. It feels like you put it in mud. It feels like it's stuck. It feels like you have to breathe hard, kind of like doing a bench press. Yeah. Okay. If, you can, if you can talk while you're paddling, you're not locked in. Yeah. Unless you're going really easy. Oh, yeah. so if you're like talking star or then Yeah, if you're saying, hey guys, you know, we're going hard and here comes a bump, then you don't have much water on your paddle. I'm not okay. stuck to do that. So even though it's it's harder and it feels like you almost like you're going slower because the paddle's not moving through the water as quick, your boat's actually moving faster. Yeah, your boat's going to travel farther in that distance. I mean, you're looking for distance and stroke. When you're on in, trying to go on bumps, is there ever a time where you're going to do quicker, like um, less, you know, digging deep kind of strokes? I don't think that you're digging less deep. I just feel like you're getting to the front quicker to get the rate up, but you still have to make the boat move to get on that bump. So if you're slipping, the boat's not moving. So your return is just faster. Your return, you get rid of the air time. Yeah. Okay. I mean, however you look at it, the stroke rate comes up, you're gonna be slipping unless the boat speed's coming up, right? And that's where the catch comes into play. Like the biggest issue that people have that I see is not locking the blade. Mm -hmm. right? And the thing that they don't realize is this n one thing is something that can make or break you through time. If you do not have that, if you lock that blade, then you can work on the rest of your stroke. Then you can work on your conditioning. Then you can work on your strength. But if you don't set it, I feel like you've just you've lost everything that you want to do after that. Right? So the biggest thing to remember is learn the catch. Take the time to learn the catch. And be patient until you fit. And I, I think as well as understanding where your catch is is, is a really big thing. You know. The longer your arms, the longer your torso, the farther forward you can get. You mark it on your boat at all or something? Or you you tape or something? Or no? Yeah, some people will actually mark, but the funny thing is if you have tape, unless you're doing video, you're not going to see where you completely sink the paddle. Oh. You can always look at that tape and think you're going in there, but you won't be. The feel is what you're looking for. You're looking to lock that blade up front and feeling like it's stuck. Right? Um, I spent one year working on my catch. By the end of that year, I had my catch. Mm -hmm. okay? Now I have it forever. Because mm -hmm. right, it's a feeling that I look for. And once you learn that catch, which is usually, like I said, about at your foot, once you're good at it and you feel it and you get it, you go an inch from hard to You don't think, like your brother asked me, he says, so I need to reach a little more. I said, you don't think about reaching farther. Think about putting the paddle in just a little bit farther forward. Okay. And then what about if the water is, um, you know, it's kind of different heights in here because you're in rough water? Find the water. you got to find it. So that means that it could be the distance of where your catch actually gets yeah. in there could and be you know, different. And in rougher water, you may have to get down to find that water, whatever oh. it is, you know, and, and sometimes it's going to be up closer to you as well. And you move your hands down there instead of your full body. Yeah. You're always trying to use your arms to get to the water more than the water. Okay. I mean, all the top paddles, you see this happen. And then what about when you said you want to, um, your, your stroke only goes as hard or so on as the boat moves fast. Yeah. Does that mean that the, what changes is how much you're pushing and the speed at which you're trying to push yourself through the water? Like you start off slower and then the, the pick up the cadence? The slower the boat's moving, the slower it's going to come through the water. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. 
So could it possibly be that maybe you're trying a little bit, you're pushing a little bit harder, but moving, moving slower initially? Absolutely. But then as you get speed, then you're actually pushing less hard. As you get speed, you have a choice now, right? Right. You reach and you find more pressure and more pressure, you get more and more speed. Mm -hmm. And once the boat's moving, like we're in a tank here, so I could set this paddle in and I could feel that lock, and right now I feel it's very, very hard. Once that boat starts moving, now I have to be able to get in and grab that quick enough to match that boat speed to have that resistance on it. Right, so I, f I kind of feel like you're getting in front, of the, in front of the water, in front of the blade. Like I'm going to come out in front of That's kind of like a tiger claw, right? You come on and boom, you want to grab that. Mm -hmm. The faster you move, the faster you have to grab it to get that lock in there. OK. And then what about people's paddle lengths? Could that have an issue on this? Or do you have any it does. I, on was, that? I just did a bunch of clinics for Kihei mm -hmm. Canoe Club. And you know, a lot of people had paddles that, I've, that were too long for them. Uh -huh. Right? So some people stand up and they measure you know, this high or this high, but then they're measuring their legs. Right. Right? You, want, you want to measure torso. Um, the more you lock your paddle, the harder it's going to feel. And if the paddle's too long, it's going to be hard on your body. On it's your shoulders, right? Usually on your shoulders, yeah. So what you want to think about is, I mean, I use a simple drill, right? You kind of come here, reach to the top of it, you want to be kind of comfortable right over in your hand. From wherever your seat is. From where you're sitting, yeah. So you want to be up here, comfortable right up on the teeth. So butt level to the top, yeah. where your arm's at, okay. And then if you, can you show me like where your top hand should be normally with a properly sized paddle and then where it looks if it's not properly sized? So as far as height here, yeah, I never even think about it. Oh, okay. So what I think about is you don't want to be too high off the water here on the, on the blade to the water. Right? Okay. So if the blade's high, the top hand's high. Uh -huh. If the blade's where it's supposed to be, close to the water, you don't even have to think about this. It's already there for you. Okay. Bottom hand, definitely I think about. And for me, I use, I mean, personally, I take a look at where the paddle ends here, right where it finishes, put a fist, give it about a half inch, and that's usually a pretty good space to keep your hand. So are you trying to sink your hand too, or no? Uh, that's, you know, that gets pretty detailed, and mm -hmm. depending on your level and how fast you're going and what you're doing through your stroke. Um, when I'm teaching someone to get their blades deep, I teach them to get your hand wet. If your hand's wet and it's in the right spot, you know the blades deep. Is there such a thing as a paddle that's too short? Yeah, too short, too hard. You know, one of the things you look at is you look at the distance between the hands, right? If the paddle's too short, then I'm going to be really close like my shoulder length. And that's hard leverage there. You know, if the paddle's too long you're, and your hand's in the right spot, you're going to be out there. So do you want like shoulder width? I look for just maybe a just, uh, just beyond shoulder width. Okay. Mm -hmm. So catch, blade. set the blade, set the blade, okay. Let the body pull the arms instead of the arms pulling. And pull yourself to that point. Let the body pull the arms instead mm -hmm. of the arms pulling. What, the what does that mean? Yeah. So at this point, like you see a lot of the, the better paddlers, right? They set here and they sit up with it. The body's pulling, pulling the arms, right? Disconnected here. So you maintain the triangle between your hands and your torso, or and then the body is just kind of like straightening up. Yeah, I mean, there's rotation. I mean, you, there's a lot to it. I mean, you know, the best thing that I can do when I teach someone new mm -hmm. is tell them to keep their arms straight, put the whole paddle in the water, maybe get your hand wet, and pull till your elbow reaches your torso. And I just start with that. Okay. Because a lot of times people will just do naturally what they're supposed to. But then we get in there, we teach people, and you say, okay, we're going to pull with your feet first, then you're going to push your thigh, and then you're going to move your hip, and then you're going to this, and then you're going to that. And they get all confused. And they're thinking about all these mechanics. And they really should just be thinking about, did I grab water? How far forward was it? Did I lock it? How much does it matter the angle of the paddle entering the water in terms of like left and right kind of angle? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, straight up, straight up and down, bottom hand, top hand lined up, pull the blade right along something. Right Cause, alongside the paddle? Because to get, to get it straight up and down, sometimes it feels like you're leaning way far over on that side. Well, the, the, the good thing is, if you're straight up and down, oh, the top hand's over the bottom, it's good. And if you are here, you can press and have pressure down, down, down okay. over the paddle. If I was to bring this top hand in through the stroke, two things happen, right? The blade comes out to the side, mm. I lose the pressure of my power being over the weight over that blade, and I push the water out to the side, and it makes the boat the same side. And the steersman has to pull more. Mm -hmm. So you get a couple benefits from coming right alongside the boat. One is you get to keep your weight over this paddle the whole time. And the other thing is you're not pushing water onto the side and you're driving the boat forward. Okay. 
Who do you, who in your opinion has like the nice paddle, nicest paddle stroke? Uh, Tahitian is by far. Yeah. Are, are there any ones on, on the internet or so on that kind of quickly reference? No, I mean, I just, I did a lot of clinics in the last few weeks and you know, you look at EDT, OPT, Paddling Connection, Air Tahiti, Nui, I mean, there's so They just many, all look good. And they all have very, very good technique. You know, mm -hmm. and that's why they're so advanced. And, I mean, the training and the, the culture, but the, the technique is beautiful. It's very, very efficient. If, if you're going on a downwind run and you're paddling, if you're paddling correctly, what muscles should be the most sore? I feel chest because of the pushing down. Okay. And sometimes lats and... So not legs, all of them maybe. not really legs, I don't know. like it used to be like kind of your legs should be so tired. No, it's not about the leg drive. It's about leg connection, it's about pressure with the legs, but it's not about leg drive. Oh. In my opinion, and what mm -hmm. I'm seeing, what I've been learning from some of the better coaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you can get as technical as you want to get, almost. I think you get technical and you push yourself right out and you just don't get where you need to be. So if you are kind of like... Let's say you're in a race and you're not, you know, you're like, oh, I think something's off or whatever. What is your mental note to keep it simple and get back on track? For me, it's usually patience in the water. Because you tend to get in a race and you start trying to pull faster through the water than the boat will move. So slow down. S you know, some people, if they think slow down, then you have soft in the water. But if you have the right pressure and you're waiting for the boat, boat to come to that point and you have a lot of pressure on that blade, I call it patience. Mm -hmm. You know, setting it and waiting for it. Because if you pull too fast, something's going to give. You're going to get hurt, paddle's going to break, or something else. Like, if you're pulling the speed of the boat, you can put as much pressure as you want on that paddle, and you're just going to get results from it. Right? So, I mean, most things, most safe. problems come from races or coming from the brain. Right. Because you know how it is in the race, right? Like, you can be prepared, and then you're racing, and it's like, oh crap, this dude's beating me. You get overexcited, What's going on? you panic. You know, what you am I supposed to do? Bring up the here? stroke rate, you slip in the water. Chop away and it doesn't do anything for you. Right? Think, am I using the right muscles? Stay in my zone. Is this my bump? Is that their bump? Right? Am I gonna reach one inch farther? Am I using the right muscle groups? Am I using my lats? Am I using my push down? You know, try not to lose. I mean it really comes down to basics. Just don't lose the basics of the stroke and keep your head. You'll have your best race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from the back on the front side now, yep. what angle would constitute like straight up and down? Top hand over bottom is what I think this way. Okay. So it doesn't have to be like exactly 12 o'clock, but kind of close. Uh, you know, I don't even think about that. Oh. You know, the thought process is, is my top hand over my bottom? Am I pulling the paddle right alongside the boat? Mm -hmm. And if the top hand comes in, I'm not. Right? Okay. If the top hand goes out, you've lost power. Uh-huh. Right? If the top hand's here, your energy is good because you're right over your bottom and your weight's on top of the blade and you can push it. Yeah. What about when it's on the the side that's opposite of the ama, and you kind of feel like, oh, I'm gonna flip if I have it straight up and down. It's funny because everybody kind of thinks of the right side as being the side that they're more tippy on, and when they're beginning, they're paddling on the left and leaning left the whole time, right? Yeah. Because this is your safety over here. But the only time you're really safe is if you can brace this paddle and push the ama down, right? So when you're on the right, it's a little more intimidating, and it takes time before you get comfortable with it, right? But what you have to remember is that if there's an issue and that alma comes up, I get to slap the water, push the alma down. Mm -hmm. right? It's just a brace. Here's my brace. This is my other alma mm -hmm. on this side. If I'm paddling on the left on a rough day and that alma comes up, for me, I have nothing over here to brace with. Mm -hmm. So once you, I mean, I really encourage people to learn how to slap the water, you know, this way. Mm -hmm. And learn to get the pressure on it and to be able to push that alma back down and practice mm -hmm. it. Because then when you're on the right, you're not so intimidated. What about uh, your left butt cheek getting sore kind of thing? Is there a way to reduce that or yeah, just lean, time? Or lean what? on both. Yeah. I mean, oh. it's just from leaning this way. You know, most people think if I lean this way, I'm going to be safe. But I mean, when we used to work with beginners, what I would think is push the left foot down, especially in a single, mm -hmm. or even the knees, you know, just kick them a little bit to get the weight this way. And that's usually helps enough. Oh. So you can still paddle on the right and have your knees kicked over a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, a little bit on rough water or when you're learning that'll help. Yeah. Just trying to get something to that side. But a lot of times when people lean this way, sometimes we actually push this right cheek down, you know, a little bit. <laughs> and you see you got all this weight over here, but you know, you think, ah, just you know, left foot, maybe knees in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Let's see from this this angle what it looks like. The catch. It's a straight right in the front. The catch. Yeah. Yeah. So go. It looks like that's the catch. Okay. So in the water, right? And for me, the way I sit in this boat, and that's maybe a little bit higher, mm -hmm. that's right at my heel. Okay. I'm in at my heel. What people don't realize is that time in the water is what's important, right? Uh -huh. It's not. It's the length in the water is important, but it's not that you're pulling super far and off the back, it's the fact that once you lock that paddle, it takes a long time for it to get to you or you to get to that blade. Oh, you're talking about time in the water of your paddle exactly. being in the water. The time okay. that not, you're in the water. Not you on the boat practicing in the water. Yes, exactly. Right. 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 So it takes a long time to just put it in here and pull it to here. So what about sometimes when it feels like, you know, when you get it and you get it to um, plant it in, but it feels like, oh, now I'm going to go slower because it's... It's just it's taking slow. more time. It's just, that's just because it takes you time to get to the paddle where you locked it. Uh -huh. Right? You have to give yourself time to get to that point. If it's coming quick, it means you're slipping. Okay. Now, you're never going to pull quick in the water unless you're on a wave or on a bump or going really fast. And is it pretty much the same thing in a six-man and a uh, one-man? I always think, you know, six man's going a little faster than one man, stroke rate's going to be a little quicker, paddle's going to come through the water a little quicker. One man, everything's going to slow down a little bit because you're moving slower. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, did I forget anything? Um, there's probably a million things we forgot, but... Yeah. And is there any difference between when you're doing like a, like a Hawaii Kai run, or flat water, or, you know, Molokai to Oahu? Any difference or no? Well, the difference between surf and being in flat water is when you're in the surf, you have to remember that you're never at one speed, right? It's never up 50 strokes a minute. You're either up or you're down. You're either chasing a bump or you're resting. You're either jumping over a bump and trying to get that rate up to get over that bump because you have boat speed or you need this extra or getting rid of the air time, right? So the surf, to me, if you're just doing a downwind run or chasing bumps, it's actually a lot harder than it is to paddle in the flat because you're exerting more energy to get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, and you also want to think you're taking if you're going to take anything off that stroke to get to the front quicker because you want to get in the water quicker, always take it off the back. Don't take it off the front. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. See you in the water. Okay. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please comment. Give us a thumbs up. And see you next time.